All right, so you guys want to be on page 50 in your interactive notebook. Your essential question is, how does evolution influence discrete traits versus polygenic traits? And then your topic is types of evolution. Aramis, you had your hand up. I was just wondering if that was the answer. Oh, yeah, it's first. I'm just bad with penmanship, that's all. So, ready to move on? All right, we'll do it then. So first thing that's going to pop up is a picture of stuff you recognize. Don't write stuff down yet, but do you recognize the picture? All right, it is two bears. Very good. So next question, same type of bear, different bear. Angela says they're both bears, so we're going to go with that. And in fact, this is somewhat confusing, and it's kind of unique to the western states. It doesn't happen where I'm from in Maine. But those are both the same type of bear. Even though one is brown, it's actually a black bear. Confusing. I know, because it's brown, so it should be a brown bear. But there are two different types of colors. They're called color phases here in Oregon of bears. There's black black bears, and there's brown black bears here in Oregon. So there's two different color phases. And pretty much the dividing line for these is um, like Central Oregon-ish. On the coast range, you tend to get black, black bears. Once you go east of that, you end up with brown black bears predominantly. There's still brown ones on the coast range. There's still black ones out east. But there are different colors of bears. Even though they're the same species, there are different colors. So hold on, Aiden. Why would it be that... Uh, east side of the state would be populated by mostly brown colored black bears and the west side of the state would be populated by mostly black colored black bears. Is it um, Because like black tends to attract more of the sunlight, so on the west side it's populated by black bears and on the west side it's great. On the east side of the state it's hotter, so there's prefer black bears because they're more attractive. That could be a reason, like thermoregulation, so the black on the east if they were black on the east side, they would be getting really hot in the summer, and that could cause an issue for them. There might also be some different reasons, Miss Kidd. Uh, maybe they could, like, camouflage, like, in their surroundings. Yeah, if you've been to the east side of Oregon, like she mentioned, um, in the summer, it's, like, browned up. There's not much uh, rain out there, and it's kind of deserty. And there could be an advantage to being brown, right? Not that they get preyed upon, but they're predators, and it could give them an advantage. Um, on the east side, where, or the west side, where we're at, why would, might it be advantageous to have dark colors, like a black color instead of a brown color? The forest. What about the forest? Here? It's really dense and, like, green. It's, green. it's really green and, like, dense. And black. And when, and when you know, the green gets together, it's really dense and it's black. Okay, yeah, lots of shadows, lots of dark areas, especially if you've ever... Like, I don't know if you've gone to the coast and hunted, like, Roosevelt elk or tried to get after a black bear on the coast or even been, like, in the coastal forest. It's dark. It's dense. There's lots of shadows. Like, that color actually blends in pretty well. It's, they're big, tall trees with a big, heavy canopy and not a lot of light makes it down. And the result is perhaps these things blend in a little better. So we'll talk about that after I answer it. Well, I'm going to talk about this, then I'll get to your question. Again. So... What we're looking at there is a discrete trait, right? Either you have black hair or you have brown hair. So it's not polygenic. It's either one or the other. And with that, what we find is that with evolution, the favorable trait is more likely to survive and reproduce, like it says here. It's called survival of the fittest. The one that fits in the best has the highest population. The one that doesn't fit in as well has a lower population number. So if you look at it on the West Coast, we'd have high black coat color populations and a low brown coat color population. If you go to the east side, that flips. It's high brown coat color, low for black coat color populations on that side. And that's because in discrete traits, there's only two options. One can be good and one can be bad. One population goes up and one population goes down. There are only two phenotypes. Aiden? Why are brown bears like way bigger than other storms? Uh, are you thinking of like grizzly bears? Oh, shoot, yeah. Yeah, grizzly bears are a different species altogether. They're way bigger, way more aggressive. Black bears tend not to want to deal with humans. Like, uh, if they do come in contact with one by accident, they'll usually get out of there. Uh, grizzly bears are a little bit different. They want to avoid us, too, but in a confrontation, sometimes they'll attack. What about polar bears? They are the most aggressive of all the bears. Okay. Really so... 
moving down here, we're going to go into a uh, polygenic trait. So you remember what kind of curve this is called? Bell-shaped. Very good, yeah, bell-shaped curve. And that is how polygenic traits are distributed. We've got, um, if we want to use height for an example, and we're looking at the area that's kind of greenish, we've got most people are average height, and the further you get from average this way, the shorter you're getting, and there just aren't a lot of super shorties, and there aren't a lot of super tallies like that. Most people tend to be average. So, what we're looking at here is how evolution works on polygenic traits, which is a little different than with discrete traits. With discrete traits, one thing goes up and the other goes down. Black coat color goes up, brown coat color goes down, and vice versa. With polygenic traits, there isn't like only tall people or only short people. Right, Juliana? Can you be writing this down and paying attention and not doing whatever with only you think? So... Um, with polygenic traits, you're not either tall or short. You're kind of short, a little bit short, a eh, little bit tall, tall, a little bit, you know what I mean? There's like the blend. So it doesn't work. Like only tall people survive, or only short people survive. It's like the blend. So what I'm going to ask you to do here is consider this any polygenic trait you want. It can be height, it could be speed, it could be intelligence, foot size, whatever. Come up with a polygenic trait. You can put on the X axis here and then explain to me an event that would cause this shift to happen. This dashed line represents the original population, and some event occurred that pushed this so the animals moved to the right on this graph. So if you want to consider the speed on here, something occurred that eliminated the slower animals and as a result made the population faster, the average speed increased. So, with your group at your table, and Peyton, since you're kind of at your own spot there, you can work with the group, one of the tables that's right around you. Um, come up with an event that could cause this to happen. A population with a polygenic trait to move either one way or the other on this graph. I'll give you guys about three minutes to come up with one. Come on. 